Hey guys, Shot the Monkey here. So, back again with another review, and uh, this time it's going to be another Tier 5 Premium Cruiser, but this time we're looking at the new Tier 5 Premium Cruiser, the Genova, uh, of course from the Italian tech tree. Uh, it's a ship that I picked up almost immediately after it came out, because of course I wanted to try the new um, semi-armed piercing shells that put into the game, and just see how the Italian cruisers generally play. Um, I've, of course this review is going to be a bit late, I've seen other people that have done reviews of this ship already. I think most of the main World of Warships um, content creators on YouTube have done a review of this ship by now. Uh, I'm coming a bit late with this because I wanted to play um, a few games and I don't play that many on this, um, I will admit. So it's taken me a bit longer with this review. Sorry about that. But it's here now. Um, first things first, I'm going to talk about this. And this is something that's relevant to another review that I did a while ago when I reviewed the Izuma. Uh, the Izuma review, at least on my channel, was inspired by a video I saw from... I Chase Gaming, um, who I believe put on a thumbnail the text just now in big red letters, uh, and he's given the same treatment on his review to the Genova. Um, and I don't specifically want to call him out on it, because I think he's fair in the points that he makes, and of course reviews are all down to opinion and how you feel about the ship. So, I Chase has his opinion about the vessel, and he's entirely entitled to that opinion. Uh, but I'll say that I disagree with him um, on what he said. And I personally don't think this ship is as bad as other people have made it out to be. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to talk about, of course, we'll go through the same system as we did last time. Armour layout, survivability, artillery, torpedoes, A, defence, manoeuvrability, and then concealment last. First things first, your armour. You have 10 to 150mm in total as your armour range, so that's a similar number of value that you get on the heavy cruiser, the Exeter, so the British heavy cruiser at tier 5, the premium. Um, you're looking at, at most about 70mm armour thickness across the Citadel armour belt, which covers most of the midsection of the ship, aside from the fore end and aft end. And you've also got quite nice armour on your main battery mounts and your barbettes, with 150 at the front of the main battery and then 100mm on the barbettes. So it's rare that your turrets will ever get knocked out, at least from other enemy cruisers shooting at them, uh, which is something that can happen on the Exeter and something that also can happen on the Yahagi, so that's quite a nice change. Uh, these are quite well armoured, so you rarely get them knocked out. Uh, the Citadel armour belt isn't as thick as it's found on the Exeter, but it's a larger armour belt in terms of length, it covers more of the ship, and it's only 6mm thinner, so the difference isn't too much of a, a major thing. Of course you will be sitted out by battleships if they fire AP at you in this thing, that 70mm of armour is not going to stop anything, but it does mean that if you angle the ship reasonably well, and considering the good turret arcs, traverse arcs that your rear turrets get shooting over the front and vice versa, you can still ricochet cells off the side of the ship with that Citadel armor belt and your turrets aren't as exposed to fire and damage as they are on the Exeter or on the Yahagi, which is the last ship I reviewed. So there's that. Uh, hit points 30,100, which is reasonably nice for the ship. Uh, I don't believe this was designed as a heavy cruiser, although I may be incorrect on that. Uh, this ship I don't think actually existed, but you see a lot of the design features from this in the Trento, which is represented at tier 6 in the tech tree. Um, and that's the ship I hope to bring a review of in the near future. And you actually have torpedo protection. You have a 13% damage reduction on torpedoes, which is another nice feature to have on this cruiser. Um, certainly very nice. Uh, it's rare that it ever happens because you are quite able to avoid torpedoes in this ship, but it is nice to have it there in case you are struck by one on the, uh, the side of the ship where you have your torpedo protection. So now we move on to the artillery. You have four twin-barreled 203mm turrets. So you've got four guns at the front and four guns at the rear. Uh, and these guns do have a 20 second reload, and if you think that sounds long, it is. Uh, but to keep that in mind, your two guns better off than the Exeter is, and the Exeter is using the same calibre guns as you. And the Exeter has a 15 second reload, so while your reload is longer than the Exeter, you are putting out more firepower if you can fire all your guns at the same time in a single volley, which is what I'd suggest that you try and do as much as humanly possible to maximise that. Uh, the turret traverse time is pretty long. Uh, I've got expert milks. I've got expert marksman on this ship, and the 180 degree turret turn time is still 23.4 seconds. Uh, without expert marksman, it is entirely possible for your ship to be able to outturn the traverse of your turrets, so you have to be mindful of that if you are performing heavy, performing heavy maneuvering to try and dodge incoming fire. Uh, the maximum dispersion for these guns is 122 meters, which is not that bad at all. Uh, we move on to the SAP shell arm penetration, which is 54 millimeters, and the maximum shell damage for the SAP shells is 4,850, which is very nice. And the AP shells come in just behind that with a maximum AP shell damage of 4,700. So if you can get the semi-armor uh, semi piercing shells to penetrate and do damage, you will be better off firing those than the armor piercing. 
in cases where you're shooting at cruisers, for example, because you're less likely to overpenetrate. But you will struggle against battleships, of course, having no high explosive shell or no fire setting chance. So battleships are really going to be a bit of a menace for you unless you can start aiming the shots very well to land uh, on the deck arm that they can penetrate or put it into the superstructure, for example. Um, but other than that, if the battleship is angling towards you or is at fairly long range, you may have a lot of trouble actually damaging it outside of using your torpedoes, of course. Uh, and I will say that the shell velocity for both the SAP shells and the AP shells is the same, 840 meters a second, which is not quick. There are faster for Tier 5 cruisers, but it's certainly acceptable enough that it doesn't make aiming too terrible. Your secondary battery is 12 single-barreled 102mm guns, and if that sounds like a lot, that's because it is. At least it certainly feels like it for a Tier 5 ship. Uh, they reload in 4 seconds, and they fire high explosive shells with a maximum fire chance, well, a fire chance at stock of 6%, and then a maximum damage of 1,450. Uh, they can only penetrate 16mm of armour, so that does mean that most ships will be able to deflect that. Um, to put that into uh, context, though, there's only 60mm of plating on the side of the Genova, and at the fore end and rear end, there's 13mm, so you can penetrate the side armour of cruisers uh, if you happen to have your secondaries opening up on them. However, that's probably unlikely considering that their stock firing range is 4.2km, which isn't exactly brilliant. Uh, but there are occasions where if you get close enough to do some close range torpedo rushes on things, or you just happen to be close to an enemy cruiser and in a bit of a close range knife fight, your secondaries will begin opening up on them, and there is a quite a reasonable amount of damage potential behind these secondaries, even with their short range. And then your main battery maximum firing range at stock is 14.3 kilometers, which again is pretty nice. And this ship is quite fast, so that doesn't feel like too much of a uh, a downside there. You can certainly get that 14.3 kilometer range to work, especially with the speed your ship goes at. Torpedoes moving on to next, you have um, four launchers, two on either side of the ship, and each launcher has two tubes, which means you can get four torpedoes off each side of the ship, and they are 533mm torpedoes, they have a maximum range of 8km, and they travel at 51 knots, so these are quite slow torpedoes, but the range is certainly acceptable, but it does mean that unless you are firing them into a ship that's sailing towards you, or is sailing perpendicular to the course of the torpedoes, it will take them a long time to reach their destination, so your lead time is going to be quite long for any... Uh, torpedoes that are fired towards that maximum range that you have of 8 kilometers. However, the reload time on the torpedoes is 47 seconds, which is pretty nice for what they are. Um, they turn pretty quickly, they have a 6 second or 8 degree turn time, and I will say that the torpedo firing arc on this ship is very nice. It's a very small angle off the uh, bow and stern, which you can't fire them, but compared to the Yahagi, these torpedoes are like night and day in terms of difference. Uh, you don't have to expose full broadside to fire these at all. You can make very good use of them, both if you are uh, engaging into a ship or if you're being pursued and trying to fire torpedoes back into your pursuer. Uh, they're certainly very comfortable to use. They don't require you to expose broadside, so there's very, very small risk of being punished for them. 
Uh, however, they don't do anywhere near as much damage as the Ahagi. They're only at 9,067, which I think is about 5,000 shy of what the Ahagis are capable of. Uh, and they are detected at one kilometre away, so the reaction time that ships get to spotting these is reasonable. Uh, certainly cruisers have a chance at dodging them, especially the more agile cruisers, but the slower cruisers in terms of rudder shift time or the ones with larger turning circles, and especially battleships, will have a hard time dodging these if they aren't already reasonably close to being bowing to them anyway when you launch them. In terms of its AA defence, your secondary battery of 12 or 102mm guns are part of your uh, AA defence. They make up the long range AA sector and the ship, yes, does have a long range AA sector, uh, which extends out to 4 kilometres. Uh, and there's a hit probability of 90% out there. Uh, only one explosion for a salvo, but of course it's tier 5 and it's a light cruiser, so you shouldn't expect too much. But it does mean that if you want to, you can spec into the upgrades and captain skills that improve your AA defence and improve the flak burst in a salvo. And then you have your mid-range AA guns, which are compromised of, uh, comprised of four single barreled 76.2mm guns, uh, which have a pretty poor continuous DPS of only 25. But they activate from three kilometres away, so it does mean that once you're within three kilometres, all of your AA guns are going to be active, because both your long-range and mid-range AA guns have a minimum action zone of 0.1 kilometres. So from 0.1 kilometres out to three kilometres, all of your AA guns will be firing, and then out to that four kilometres, that last kilometre, it would just be your secondary battery of the 102mm guns. So you could, certainly could use captain points to spec into AA defence if you wanted to. I personally wouldn't suggest it. I think it's a waste of captain points, and I think they could be spent on uh, better options for captain skills than specking into something like BFT and AFT and manual fire control, for example. But that's down to individual preference there. Dritti di prua. Signori a dritta. Signori dritti di prua.
Next, move on to maneuverability. Your maximum speed in this ship is 34.5 knots. That's without a flag, so stock is 34.5 knots. Your turning circle radius is 660 meters and a rudder shift time stock of 8.6 seconds. This is far better in terms of how it feels than the Ahagi certainly felt. Uh, and this ship most certainly can torpedo beat and dodge torpedoes, even fired from close range in a fairly like narrow spread. Uh, the rudder shift time is very nice. The turning circle is, I believe quite considerably shorter than the Yahagi's turning circle. I think the Yahagi had a 690 meter turning circle. But in terms of speed, you're on par with the Yahagi, about 35, 34 and a half knots. Your rudder shift time isn't as quick, but I think that's made up for by the smaller turning circle, which certainly feels a lot more cruiser-esque, especially down at tier five, which is kind of what you'd expect. Uh, in terms of detectability, you are detected at sea from 11.5 kilometers away stock. That's without consumer expert, but with the camo that the ship comes with, the premium camo. And then from air, you're detected at 8.3 kilometers away. Your assured detectability range is of course two kilometers, and in smoke, you are detected at 6.6 .6 kilometers away if you're firing your main battery. This does of course mean that at stock, your main battery range is three, just shy of three kilometers longer than your detectability range. So you do have a window where you can um, actually use your guns and not be detected if you're either behind smoke, behind an island, whatever it might be. So there is that. Uh, however, it does mean that from a stock, you cannot fire your torpedoes without being detected. And I don't think it's possible to bring the concealment range down enough that you can ever fire your torpedoes without being detected. So that's something to keep in mind if you ever go for a torpedo attack is that you will be spotted doing so. Uh, so therefore, if people have got any common sense, they will start taking you under fire if they can see you coming in close range to fire your torpedoes off this ship. Uh, overall, I've enjoyed it. Uh, I think the SAP shells are very nice, especially for me, because I kind of value their consistent damage over the uh, kind of um, more inconsistent, more fire-reliant damage that most HE shells have, especially having come from the Ahagi, where you're relying on fires quite a lot to do damage because the shells weren't that good. Having these 203s on this ship and having eight of them in total uh, has certainly been very nice with the SAP shells. Uh, I personally think this ship is, if you are interested in that kind of thing, um, if you've seen any videos on SAP shells, or if the idea of having that more consistent damage uh, and giving up the fires for that, if that's okay for you, then I'd certainly suggest um, definitely grinding out for the Tech Tree, cru uh, Tech Tree Cruisers that are available in the event that's currently going on. Uh, and if you like those, then definitely invest in this ship. I invested in this ship before I got any of the Tech Tree ships, simply because I'm kind of a collector and I wanted to have it. And I know there's quite a few uh, interesting Italian ships out there in terms of designs and also in terms of appearance that they have. And also, I wanted to try out these new mechanics regardless. Even if I wasn't going to like the SAP shells, I still wanted to have the chance to have the premium ship and to try those shells out. And as it turns out, the decision was a good one because I enjoyed this ship and also the new shells that they've entered into the game. Uh, so I can't wait to try out the rest of them. I've just unlocked the mission for the uh, the Tier 5 Tech Tree ship, and I'll be completing that mission and grinding out the modules for that and getting you to review, getting your review of that pretty soon. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this video. This has been my review of the Tier 5 Premium Cruise in Genova. I have been Shot the Monkey, and I will see you all next time.